Awesome. Rob. Dave. New Year. It is. We're here. Happy 2018. We man. made it. And look at this. He brought over gifts. I did indeed. I'm just taking it with me. I'm sorry. Okay, so you what take that one. I'll take this one. We'll be good to go. <laughs> so we're we're here uh, to talk about this new camera, and I cannot believe that there's a new camera that was launched because there's a new camera that was just launched. It's been fast and furious lately. It's so, going to be a busy new year for <laughs> Panasonic people. Yeah. I think. So G9, that's coming out right away. Yep, January, it's gonna be available. It was announced in November. Like pronto. And this yeah. is what, what is this beast? This is a brand new fresh announcement. Whoa! GH5S what, is here. What does S mean? The S is for low light, which doesn't have any S's in it. Let's but be the, Chinese. The S is for low light. Okay. This is the low light variation of the GH5. And this is the G9, which is the the stills optimized version of the GH5. Cool, and, and I kind of understand the G9 because like, you know, still optimization is a cool thing because GH5, everybody loves that thing for video, YouTube yeah. and things like that. But an S, dude, like they're already killing it with the GH5. And yeah. so why does this thing exist? Why do you make an S? It's a, it's a very unique animal and it, it really was in response to what we were hearing from customers who love the GH5. Yeah. And we heard a lot of feedback about low light. It would be great if we could have something in the form factor of the GH5 with the quality and all the, all the broadcast video um, settings and, and, and pieces that are included in that GH5 and have it really optimized for low light. Huh. So this is not replacing the GH5? That's absolutely right. It's a, it's a complement to the GH5. I look at them right. kind of like siblings. The GH5 still for me stands in the middle and it's it's the king for most things. It's still going to be the most versatile and the most well-rounded camera for most people. So stills and video. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Got these these are more specialized variations of that that GH5 platform. How is this different than the GH5? It looks the same except for some fancy red stuff I see. Yeah, it's going to look very similar. Yeah. Form factor is the same. The body is the same. It's going to feel exactly the same in your hand. Uh, the buttons and the layout here on the back are the same. Screens are the same. Uh, the, the main change that you're gonna see is a little red ring here. Your recording button there is highlighted red and you've got a nice red S on the front there as well. The red S. Other than that, it's uh, there's not a lot of changes Physically. from the outside. Got looking it. at the camera. Oh, and there was one thing that I did notice that was changed and that's a port over on the left side. Yes. And uh, over here, we've got a USB C yeah. port. This was a big right. uh, a big request from people to be able to charge uh, and power the camera off of USB. And speaking of power, some of the differences that we get, this one also has the quick charger that the G9 yes. came out with. Yep, both of these come with a quick charge, which is an option on the GH5. It doesn't come with it, but you can still buy it separately. So besides the battery, we've got a lot under the hood that makes this better for low light. 11 megapixel sensor. Ah, a lot less pixels. Which is almost half of what yeah. the GH5 is at 20 megapixels. Um, no low pass filter on either of them uh, to try and make them as sharp as possible. Yeah. Uh, but you are gonna capture quite a bit more light per pixel in this camera compared with GH5. And that's crazy because I know this one has a dual native ISO. Yes, uh, that's a new addition for this. And the insane thing, we were trying to look this up and it's with standard recording, it's 400 and 2500. Right? Yep. And in V-Log, where you get more dynamic range in your recording, it's 805,000 ISO, native, yep. native. Which means this baby was born to record natively at 5,000 ISO. That's Which insane. is a little bit hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, yeah. That's very high yeah. for a native ISO number. And uh, extended ISO, this goes down to 80, I believe? Yeah, the full range is 80 to just over 200,000, 204,800. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. I can't... Which is a, a huge... <laughs> it's How a many huge jumps range. up is that from 5,000, right? And so yeah. it's incredible what they, on, on specs anyways, uh, what this thing is capable of. Yeah, there, there are a few... Um, changes that had to be made from the GH5. This is not a stabilized body, which uh, is gonna be interesting for a lot of people. Tears. But that is one of the really key features of the GH5. Yeah. And in, in order to optimize this, um, the engineers had to let that go. It still yeah. will make the most of the lens stabilization. Okay. So lens like this, this is the 1235 2.8 lens, which is gonna be, I think, quite popular 
um, for videographers using this camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a, a fairly versatile zoom range and the 2.8 fixed aperture is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so with that lens, it is stabilized. You're still gonna have a stabilization benefit with the lens, but we don't have in-body stabilization. All right, yeah. what else is great about the GH5S? The viewfinder refresh is gonna be a little bit faster. Ah. We've got the, uh, and that's carryover from this guy. We've got the 120 frames a second refresh rate on the viewfinder. We've improved the ability to focus in low light. So that same 225 autofocus point, really highly customizable autofocus mm -hmm. um, and, and the touchscreen compatible autofocus. Now we'll, it'll capture its subject in minus five exposure value. So the GH5 the would have been minus four. So this can be it. one stop better as Which far as huge. autofocus capturing. Yeah. And something else I noticed in the spec sheet was that this can record with the new H.265 or HEVC codec, which yep. is pretty amazing. Yeah, you bet. It's gonna, again, provide a little bit wider range yeah. for, for people, whether they're you know, filming for a documentary or filming for a, a really highly produced video or whether yeah. they're working on a personal project. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna be able to take advantage of you know, the all intra 400 megabits per second settings all the That's way down crazy. to the the H.265 yeah. optimized settings, which which can really save a lot of room on your card and give you a little bit more flexibility. So, yeah. so um, it is 420, not 422, but it is 10 bit, which means the gradation in color should be much smoother, like in your skies and things yep. like that too. Yeah, yeah, and it'll give you a little bit more flexibility uh, in getting it just the way you like it, getting the look that you want. Uh, style is such a huge component to video production and, and to be able to have more flexibility to tweak it perfectly, I think is gonna to appeal to a lot of people. That's awesome. With all this low light capability, who is this camera for, really? I see it really appealing to um, a lot of professional videographers and documentary makers. Yeah. And we were talking about even wedding videographers, right? And so yep. the GH5, the, the original GH5 would be awesome for running gun because it's got the camera yeah. stabilization in. Yeah, but then, if, you're, if you're video blogging, if yeah. you're on the run, if you know that, uh, you're going to be shooting video in all kinds of scenarios yeah. that you can't necessarily anticipate. That's going to be the, best the more versatile option. Now, this one would be awesome for low light if you're shooting in the church at dark, in the reception yeah. time that's dark, when yeah. the speeches are they're roaming around or whatever, right? Yeah. But you put it on a tripod and you've got this low light king. Yeah, but it really is, I think, going to appeal to a different, different type of person. Uh, and the GH5 is still there yeah. in my mind as the as the the king of most things. The king of the hill. Yeah. And the G9, still shooter, king, um, because it has more megapixel. You've got the bigger viewfinder you mentioned as well. Yeah. Um, and this is gonna be the new low light king. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's for me to put all three of them side by side as, as, a, as a line and as, as siblings to each other is a great way to think about it because we've, uh, really what we've taken and they've come out in such quick succession, we've taken yeah. a super popular platform. Yeah and the GH5, which which hit hard and everybody was anticipating it and excited about it. And now you've got three options instead of just the one, which uh, we're really just trying to take that same GH5 that we love and give it to more people. Awesome, very cool. Well, I'm excited to get my hands on it because um, I'm kind of at the point, trying to make the jump from uh, going from shh, uh, full frame camera <laughs> to like oh, uh, no. Panasonic. I know, shh, don't tell, don't tell. <laughs> if you're watching this, don't tell. But yeah, and so I'm not sure if the GH5 or the GH5S is right for me. Um, I mean, YouTube and doing professional video stuff, I think both would be awesome, but obviously yeah. not all of us have the funds to get both at one time. Yeah. So I think the ultimate test is going to be putting these babies through their paces and seeing where are you shooting, what are you shooting, and how do you shoot. Yeah. And so, yeah, Now awesome. that we have our hands on them, we can, uh... We can test them out a little more, yeah. more thoroughly. So get yourself to a camera store in Calgary, the camera store, and uh, fondle these ones for yourself. Yeah, get your hands on it. Woohoo! Well, thanks so much for being here, Rob, man. Thanks for having me. Let's have some cookies. Love being here. Ciao. <laughs>